Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I hope you can see me. I can't see you, but. <laughs> All right, well, that was extremely adorable, and I'm going to talk to you today about something just as adorable, the Lean Startup Principles. We can start the uh, slideshow. So I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of Fashion Metrics, and so we like to think of ourselves as the Pandora of menswear. And we were actually born out of Lean Startup Machine, and that's a weekend competition that you know you learn all about the Lean Startup. And so since then, we've been challenging our ourselves, as Brittany said, to run the company as a Lean Startup. So I hope to um, tell you about what the Lean Startup um, is, and then use Fashion Metric as a case study of uh, how we how we go about following it. Um, so who here uh, is familiar with the Lean Startup principles? Just to get an idea. Okay. So that's a good number of people, but for those of you don't, that don't, there's a book all about it um, that Eric Ries wrote. But essentially, the goal of the Lean Startup is to learn what is valuable to the customer. And it's often confused with um, bootstrapping, but Lean is not the same as bootstrapping. It's not to save money, so it's a different thing. It's actually all about customer development. And it's all about really talking to your customers and understanding who your customers are even before you start building your product. And so in the initial part of the Lean Startup, you do a lot of customer um, development to understand who is your customer, what is the problem that they're experiencing, and then once you really truly validate that it's a real problem, you start to execute on building a product um, to solve that problem, all the while using results from, and um, I guess, customer interaction data to guide your development process. So just uh, before I get into how Fashion Metric followed this process, I'll tell you what Fashion Metric is today. Um, so we are an intelligence-driven um, e-commerce platform that's all about helping men discover amazing brands online curated to their size and style. So as I said, I, we like to call ourselves the Pandora of menswear. So how it works is you come to the site and you tell us a little bit about yourself, some really easy, basic questions, and then we seed that information into our fit technology, which then allows us to understand really detailed information about your measurements. So then we use that information to pair you with brands that we find all over the world. Everything's curated to your size and style. And so you can shop two ways. We have a two-tiered approach to shopping. Um, and that is you can either put your shopping on autopilot by joining our subscription um, service, or you can shop your monthly collection that's basically uh, sent to you as a monthly issue of uh, brands curated to your um, size. And right now, we're just starting with uh, dress shirts. And we're expanding from there later this year. So how do we start? So um, we follow the Lean Startup principles, and this is sort of how we like to explain it. So we broke it up into three main phases, the first being, being the exploratory phase, So, and then after that, the concierge phase. Now these phases, these first initial phases are all about figuring out who your customer is and the problem that they're experiencing, and really validating that this is actually a real problem. And so this really helps you to balance the technical and market risks. First, it helps you to understand, is it technically feasible to solve the problem that I validated? And also, right away, you start to understand your market and start to develop customers before even building anything. So it's really nice, because by the time you have something built, you actually have customers to work with. So once you understand your customer's problem, then you go through this iterative cycle where you take your ideas, you build something, such as code in our case, because we're a technology-based company, and then you measure with customers, and then you get your data and your metrics, and then based off of that information, you make some decisions, and then you kind of keep going with that cycle. So let me tell you about the first phase, so the exploratory phase. So Fashion Metric actually started as a completely different idea, so it can kind of illustrate what I'm talking about with pivoting and understanding um, who, your, what, who your customer is. So we actually started as a, an idea around being a real-time personal shopper uh, via a mobile app. And so we thought our customers were people that uh, were shopping alone in clothing stores, and they had a general problem of having um, an inability to decide what to buy, because there's just so many options in a store, and we thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if they could take a picture of their options and gain access to a real-time um, personal stylist via the app and give them advice on what to buy. Sounds like it could be a pretty good idea, right? So we set out to determine whether or not this was. And so through the exploratory phase, it's all about talking to your customers, figuring out who you identify as your customer, and asking them questions to really see if this is a real problem that exists. But it's best not to ask leading questions, like, hey, if I built an app that did this, would you use it? When you talk to people and ask these leading questions, they tend to get uncomfortable, and they'll say yes just because 
you know, most people don't like you and me. So you want to ask really broad, open-ended questions so that hopefully they say the problem that you think that they have. So we asked, what is the biggest problem you experience while you're shopping for clothes? So it's super open-ended. And what we thought was really interesting. So we went to several malls. Um, we're based in LA right now. So we went to several malls and talked to tons of people shopping alone. So basically, we were like stalking shoppers in malls and, <laughs> and asking them weird questions. But uh, once you get over the discomfort of that, you actually end up learning a lot. So we actually talked to uh, t hundreds of people. And we found from all the people we talked to, none of them expressed the problem of indecisiveness while they shopped. So it was really interesting. But what the advantage of asking this open-ended question was we learned something um, valuable which was a general trend that we found that every guy we talked to said, well, actually, the biggest problem I have when I'm shopping for clothes is I have a really hard time finding clothes that fit. And then they would get really animated about it. And they would say, you know, because my neck is too thick, or my chest is too narrow, or my arms are too long, or whatever the reason is, they had some challenge finding clothes that fit right. So that was really interesting. So that's when we decided to pivot on this idea, because the other problem didn't seem to exist. So we really challenged yourself, OK, is this actually a real validated problem. So we changed our customer hypothesis to um, men that care about what they look like, you know, within a certain age demographic as well, and um, thought, you know, these guys have problems finding clothes that fit. So we set out to have, like, a, it basically assembled a team to uh, approach guys in shopping malls in LA, San Francisco, and New York City. So we talked to hundreds of guys and, and started to collect data and uh, ask the same open-ended question. And what we found was really quite striking. Over 90% of the guys we approached um, alluded to some problem with fit. And so that was very interesting to us. And we thought, okay, well, we can't solve the fit problem for all garments because that's just such a big problem to um, attack right away. Um, so we narrowed it down and learned that it was actually um, button down dress shirts, whether it's worn formally or casually, tended to be the biggest pain point for guys to uh, find to get the right fit. So that's when we were like, okay, so we have. A, we, ha we, ha we have a pretty good idea of who our customer is and a real problem that we feel confident that is, is, is a validated problem that truly exists. So the next thing is to build on your minimum viable product, which is a concept in the lean startup movement, which is basically a version of your product that allows you to collect the most amount of information with the, with the least amount of effort, so the, the smallest product that you can possibly build to get more data. And then getting that data can guide your next development. So that's what we did. So we moved into the concierge phase. So in this phase, um, we built a simple landing page. You can, there's all kinds of tools available to do that. We use LaunchRock. And um, by minimum product, we, we thought to, okay, we want to get people fitted. So what we did was when they signed up for the site, we got their email addresses, we emailed them and set up phone calls. So instead of actually building a site, we were actually just calling people on the phone. And then we asked them a ton of questions and then basically put together some shirts that we thought would fit them and delivered to them with a very basic site that we built up which was not even linked up with PayPal or anything like that at the time. We actually sent them an invoice um, afterwards if they purchased it with PayPal. Um, so super um, simple, and then got feedback on whether or not it fit. So this process really was really valuable because if you can find customers that would go out of their way through some inconvenient process to solve their problem, then you know that you have a juicy problem that's worth solving. And we tended to talk to the customers for like half an hour on the phone. You know, so if we could actually build something convenient, then we know that we perhaps we would uh, we're onto something here, and then also it helps to mitigate the technical risk because instead of going right away and starting to build some kind of solution that's more sophisticated and not manual like talking on the phone, um, we can start to um, grasp how we would build a technology to solve the problem. So, um, but before we started building our technology, um, from that process of asking all these 25 questions that uh, to understand the fit we actually found a certain number of questions that guys tended to know about their body um, that was a reliable set of questions that we could ask. So that was really helpful for understanding how we're going to build a technology to solve this fit problem. And so we actually narrowed it down to, um, this is a screenshot of what it used to look like, now it's down to five questions. But um, So we were narrowing down the questions that people knew, and we wanted to see, okay, can people, uh, will people, when we drive them to the site, will they actually input this information? And so we did find that they did, and we had 87% of the people coming to our site actually inputting the information. So then we had, a custom, we, had, we had an idea of who our customer was, what their problem is, we knew that they would enter certain information, so we felt pretty good about taking the time to actually build a fit technology. So we ended up building a fit technology that 
is all based on data analytics. We have, we have dimensions of thousands of men's body, body measurements, and that allows us to um, take, take that uh, key information and put it into our fit technology, and then it extrapolates all your measurements, and uh, then we can use that to pair you with brands. Um, so we wanted to um, vigorously test the technology, so now into the build, measure, learn phase of the Lean Startup. And so what we did was we made a brand relationship with Second Button, and they're actually a made-to-measure brand in New York City. So this was interesting because our technology extrapolates your full complement of measurements, and then we wanted to see and really test the technology and see can we take all those measurements, these detailed measurements, and actually build a shirt from a bolt of cloth from our measurements solely instead of actually measuring the customer. So that's what we did, and we ended up selling hundreds of shirts doing this with the technology, and we actually found ourselves to have zero returns. So that was very exciting, so it really validated to us that you know, we built a technology that worked. So then, so now we have a technology that works, it's built out, we, ha we know who our customers are, we know what problem they have, we know that they'll answer in their information when we send them to our site, so can we get brands to work with us, and are brands interested in partnering up and getting on our platform and being connected to customers. So that's, I guess, the next phase of our build, measure, learn. So we, we started to establish brand relationships. Are brands interested in what we're doing? And what we found was two-thirds of the brands that um, are on our site actually approached us. So we found strong interest, which was really exciting to see. And we actually learned more about our market, which is also from the brand side. So there's a two-sided problem. Men have a hard time finding clothes that fit, but also, um, independent designers and emerging brands have trouble connecting to customers online. And so we can help close that gap for them. And so then we decide, okay, so now we have inventory on the site. We know that men will uh, enter in information. We have technology that works. Now we, f we feel good about actually building out our uh, website. So we built out a fully functional e-commerce platform. And we measured, so we had customers enter, they entered their data as they had before, and they started browsing their personalized stores and there was some strong interest. So then, um, by constantly sending customers to the site, we learned even more by getting lots of feedback. Um, we've had lots of requests for options to put the shopping on autopilot, so we deployed a subscription service um, earlier uh, this month. And we're we have a lot of uh, um, uh, requests for other types of clothes, so we're bringing on blazers and sweaters later this year and pants early next year. So this is uh, essentially what it looks like now, just running through it. So you go onto the site, you get fitted. Um, we only ask height, weight, pant waist, and uh, your favorite brand and size in that brand are the only required questions. And that's enough information for us to pull out your detailed measurements. And then you can browse your, your store, all curated to your size, or join the monthly uh, club and have it on autopilot. And so it doesn't stop there, so we're always learning. So taking your ideas, building on it, and then coding if you have a technical project or whatever it is that you need to build. And then, of, of course, always measuring what you learn, collecting that data, and then using that to um, drive your next iteration. So, yeah. Um, I also mentor at the Lean Startup Machine. I'm really into the methodology, so if you're interested in learning more, I would love to hear from you. So please email me, dana at fastermentech.com. That's about it. Thank <laughs> you.